You made headlines uh, all over the city of Detroit announcing your departure for December 2022, yeah. at the end of the year. You're yes, leaving sir. Forgotten Harvest. Yes, sir. You've been here the last eight years. How does somebody know uh, when it's time to go? Hmm. You know, that's a great question. Uh, you know, everything does have a divine order to it. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's as much like knowing when it's time to go or knowing when it's time to make a transition. It's always being prepared for any kind of change that's coming in your life. And when it's coming, you should be ready for it like it was meant to be. Mm. So eight years, uh -huh. you've done a lot. What are you most proud of? For my accomplishments here? Yeah. I would say the team that we have, uh, the place our team is, is right now, uh, as far as the morale, as far as our focus, um, the people who make up the team here, uh, their dedication, um, their commitment to the mission. I've witnessed them like demonstrate their capacity in, as heroes mm. during a crisis yeah. in our community yeah. and held mm. strong. They've been stressed by not only the need to step up to our responsibility, but also you know, the ambition of a vision to do more for our community. And they, they've been working 100% plus, you know, the whole time. So amongst everything here, I'm really proud to have served next to the people that make up Forgotten Harvest. That's amazing. We're sitting in the warehouse of Forgotten Harvest, brand new facility. Yes. I want to ask you about what it feels like to have something go from idea yeah. to actualization. What does it feel like to be sitting here? Um, I feel powerful. I feel like uh, this is uh, one of and the last proof and evidence that I need that anything that we can conceive, we can, can, we can achieve in our life. And um, whether it's been through you know, working through some really, really critical times and trying to figure out how to pivot a community in Brightmoor or coming here and dealing with the multiplicity of needs and responsibilities uh, as, a, as a leader in this kind of a dynamic, you know, situation. Um, being able to, to have a vision through this and take the time to organize other people's minds and visions around where that vision can actually take us towards our holistic mission, it feels good to know that the power to manifest is within my, my, my hands. Mm. And um, <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited about figuring out a way to take that to the next step in, in my future and envision the greatest possibilities for my, the rest of my life. You've always seemed to sort of be a leader that's you know on a cutting edge. I mean, the things you did with Brightmore and the things that you've done here. How, how do you stay fresh? I'm always, I'm always um, taking in information. Yeah. Constantly. Uh, more than a normal, you would probably, <laughs> <laughs> more than you would probably see a normal person doing from, it, whether it was reading books, articles, uh, sucking in information quickly. If I hear a concept or something I'm interested in and go straight to the YouTube on it mm -hmm. and try to find the different um, pathways of understanding what the concept is and then once i'm really interested in something i want to know about the entire like um linguistics around it, the definitions i want to really understand it and then be able to like form my own opinions about it and then i just lock the information away and then we'd be in a conversation like it just, one, and it comes out yeah be a conversation <laughs> one where somebody be like you know what there's a relevant thing that i actually heard about that and i just love i just love sucking the information and knowing what's going on um in our world right now i think it's it's it, it is an essential attribute um, for me, for leadership, if I want to know what's coming and I'm responsible for a mission, a re, you know, a big, um, you know, project or, you know, uh, initiative that has to be addressed and yeah. people. Like if the leader doesn't know what's supposed to be coming tomorrow, like whose else responsibility is that? So after the announcement of your departure, 
Uh, you posted on your Facebook page uh, this this link to a landing page, yes. IamKirkMays.com. Yeah. And let me read something back to you. It says that Kirk Mays on the landing page is a consultant, a speaker, a humanitarian, and an author. Right. We getting a book from Kirk Mays. Right. I got a couple more months to uh, to the end of the year. Uh -huh to continue to focus on uh, being the Chief Executive Officer for Forgotten Harvest. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. Once I complete this role and my responsibility here, there's a lot of things that I've been wanting to do that I could say uh, will allow me to spread my wings and chase some of my dreams as an entrepreneur and fulfilling and becoming um, the full vision and I think um, purpose for who I can be in this world. And I think all, the, all those things that, that you see there are part of the beginning of that journey. Only the beginning? Yes. Okay. So. I, I gotta tell you, everything I've done so far is just the beginning. Woo, so you're still becoming. I am still becoming. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Do you I, know what you wanna write this, about? I haven't, this, this, I haven't even started yet. <laughs> For real. All right, so I gotta, I gotta ask you uh, just some questions yeah. that folks really wanna know. Yeah. Are you running for mayor? Um, that's not my immediate plan. However, a lot of people have asked me that question. And, um, you know, I'm not a politician, man. I, I, I don't have the uh, ambition to uh, be a politician. I'm somebody who really believes in um, action and uh, getting things done, not sitting up and politicking and putting signs up and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not the I'm not the, the, the linguistic activist. I'm an action-oriented type of individual, and I'm a servant. So, if there's some work to be done and I'm asked to, 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 to uh, answer a call, I don't know what will happen if that come around, brother. But at this point, I'm looking at consulting, authoring, public speaking and helping people around the world as much as possible. Of course, of course. Can I, can I park here though for a minute yeah. and ask you about uh, the weightiness that comes along with being called? Mm. I recognize that sometimes folks are called to do something that is really against what their aspirations are for themselves. If I know Kirk Mays, I know that uh, he would take a call to serve seriously. Yeah. Are you being called to what? Serve as mayor? Uh, I don't. Or to make I a don't, run for it? I don't know, brother. That that's that depends on if that's a question or request. No, it's a question. Okay. So I don't. I I have not been called as yet. Okay. In my opinion, uh, I think what is happening at this point in Detroit politics has for the most part moved us forward. You know, I, I sat down just this week, uh, you know, having some lunch, planning on some things for the future and took some time and looked up into the skyline and saw all those cranes mm -hmm. and saw the development that's happening downtown. And it's really encouraging to see what, where we've come from. On the same token, you know, I have had some interesting conversations with people as well about our quickness to like complimenting Time Magazine about coming in and telling us that we some best city in the country when, when I was on the ground fighting on the front lines trying to figure out how to make this thing happen and they, you know, bought a house on Parker Street and took some time to actually analyze everybody's work. They ain't talked to none of the folks I know that was on the ground, but they wrote a cover story about the tragedy of Detroit and everybody now is just talking about some, oh, we so happy that time writing good stories about it. So I'm like, yo, where are the people who was here then? Yeah. It feel like everybody that's actually, um, you know, recognizing that kind of a story is kind of new. If you don't remember how it felt when they slapped us in the face before, like nobody want to talk about that. So, you know, there are things that I feel like are still being unaddressed mm -hmm. and the uh, old pain mm. that, you know, Detroit's turnaround started with. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think it has to be addressed. It has to be, it has to be uh, something that has to be faced. But I, I'm gonna tell you, I'm really also at the same time encouraged by all the leadership that we do have with the generations that 
are coming like you know behind me not necessarily at a certain level i'm saying i'm at the top of level nothing like that but i'm just older than most folks you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's that's in the work right now i'm yeah. 46 years old and then either i've been here longer than you have or i'm just literally physically older than you know what you're doing mm -hmm. you, you are but there's so many amazing people. You you you're one of those examples. Um, Charity Dean, Dewan yeah. Dandridge. Dewan's older than me, but Dewan's impact in the work has been amazing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I feel like we are in good hands. We got incredible talent in the mayor's office with a lot of the team members that are in there and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And if we get to a point where, um, you know, my city feels like I need to take on a more active role, then my ears are open. Okay. Um, well, I got to tell you, though, we all need to be paying attention to the, the, the world that we're sitting in and not, not just our city, too.